broadcast is now starting. All <laughs> attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi everybody, welcome to today's Advanced Design Twilight webinar. Today we'll be looking at uh, designing steel connections with Advanced Design and Idea Statica. So my name is Jamil Dida, and today I'm going to be presenting you this webinar. So I'm one of the application engineers here at Grey Tech, and I uh, work for the Structures Simulate team. I'm responsible for providing you with uh, content such as this, the so webinars. I also provide training and technical support alongside um, demonstrations of our products as well. So before joining Grey Tech, I have worked as a structural engineer for a number of years in the industry, and I've designed um, <clears throat> various structures in my time uh, in a range of materials, so steel, concrete, timber, uh, both to Eurocodes and British standards. So you can reach me on LinkedIn. So if you want, please feel free to send me an invitation to connect on LinkedIn, or you can send me an email as well if you have any questions. During this webinar, you can post a question uh, in the questions pane or the chat box. Alternatively, you can send me an email. My email address is jamil.dida at greytech.com. So, as usual, this webinar is being recorded and it will be uploaded to our Great Tech Content Center. So the Great Tech Content Center is where you will find all of our content. Uh, this includes uh, various content such as tips and tricks. We also share with you best practices um, and known industry workflows as well. And that covers uh, not only structures, but also uh, manufacturing and also the AEC industry. So please allow up to 10 working days or two weeks for this webinar to be added to the Great Tech Content Center. And in case if you have missed any of our previous webinars, so Monday and Tuesday, so Monday, if you missed that webinar, or the Tuesday's webinar, you can head over to our Great Tech Content Center where these will be uploaded. So let's now go over an overview of what we're going to be covering today. To start with, I will be showing you how to create a connection in advanced design. We'll then look to take this connection through to the um, through the connection steel connection designer using the steel design module in advanced design. We'll then uh, also need to be able to generate reports and drawings. So we'll be doing all of that with advanced design. And to top it off, we will also be looking at designing a connection in Idea Statica. So in Idea Statica. We can design all our non-standard joints, which are uh, not too, it's not simple joints as per your simple green book joints. These are our non-standard joints and awkward joints that we can design in Idea Statica. So, as always, I really hope you enjoyed today's session, and I hope there's something you can take away today as well. It's so a time to get cracking. Okay, if you bear with me one second. Let's just uh, load the video. Okay, so now let's take a look at the design of a connection in a vast design. Okay, so here I have a uh, structure in advanced design. 
and I'm going to be looking at designing a connection in here. So I'm just going to turn off the loads and load areas so that we're left with these structural elements. And now let's look at creating a connection uh, on the end here. So I'll just remove this connection and generate it again for you. It's very simple to create connections in advanced design. <clears throat> Although these are shown as uh, geomet geometrically, they're shown as plates. Um, they're obviously much more than that. They are bolted connections. Uh, just the details not quite shown um, in as part of the structure. So I can create a fixed connection on selection. In this case, let's create a beam to column fixed connection. But you can also uh, create tubular connections, generic joints as well. So let's add a beam to column fixed connection. Okay. So if we now open this connection with uh, the steel connection designer we need to open the analysis model but once you've analyzed in advanced design you can simply open one of these connections uh, with the connection designer you can either open it as part of the integrated module or you can export it to the standalone module as well so let's open one of these connections Okay, so you see it, uh, it's carried through the, the cotton and the beam along with the haunch. And we also have a series of forces with this, which this connection is going to resist. So we've got a, uh, a shear force, a moment, and an actual force. Let's switch back to now. Uh, let's have a look at the view. So you can turn around, you can twist it in this interactive 3D view and have a look at the connection in detail. Okay, we also have an elevation and a section view on the right hand side. Over now, let's have a look at the geometry. So, here we would typically design our plates and bolts and welds uh, using the geometry tab. We have got stiffeners up in the top and the bottom, because by the time we add the haunch, it is a relatively deep section. So. Uh, we can increase this if we want to 15 millimeters, but I'll keep them as 10. The plates, so it's nominally saying that 15 millimeters should be okay. But I can reduce that, keep this at 15. The next up is the width on the plate. At the moment, it's relative to the size of the column, but we can impose an exact value on here. So let's just increase this. 200 millimeters and the same applies for the length of the plate okay so the dimension of the plate can either be relative to the section or an exact section size with the bolts we have a range of bolt diameters i'm just going to show you what these are so you've got 18 millimeters that i've chosen here i've upped that to 20 uh, position positioning is in terms of the rows and the columns. So at the moment we've got two rows of the bolts here. So now if we choose that to be centered, at the moment we have a spacing of 80 in between them. I feel that they're a bit close to the web here of the incoming beam. So I'm just going to slightly push these out a little bit, 100 millimeters. Okay, there we go. If for any reason these distance you've exceeded the uh, maximum the tolerance or the allowable distances or if you're under the minimum distances you will be alerted by uh, in the warnings messages area when you run the calculation okay, same applies for the uh, bolts distancing in the other direction so time now to look at the holes and plates there are several different types of holes 
Okay, you can have a round hole, a counter sunk hole for in deflection heads and a slotted mill. Okay, so that was the wells. Um, check collisions, it's always good to turn this on. So with the check collisions, it will check for any collisions between the whether that's the bolts or the welds and the section sizes. Here are the design assumptions. So we're looking at all the failure, stub mode and your partial factors. The load combinations. So these are the loads which have been brought through from the main model. We can generate new mark combinations and generate combinations based on our load cases. So I'm just going to generate some combinations. Um, yes, and then in the load definition, here are the loads, all our load cases, all the wind in different directions. So we'll apply this, and now let's calculate it. Okay, so we've calculated our section, and it is, and uh, we could do with actually undersizing perhaps the bolts, um, reducing them a little bit. The maximum work ratio is only around 55%, and that's for the welds, not even the bolts. So the bolts are uh, relatively wet, they're well in, wet under work. You can see shear and tension being the critical factor here at 24%. So here I can turn on dimensions as well and turn the loads on and off the 3D view. So from here I can turn on the dimensions for the beam. Okay, so for the connection, the length and the height. There we go. Okay, so the report. So we want to be able to get this out to the report. Let's have a look at uh, the settings for the report. Okay, so as usual, we have a um, few levels of report here, depending on the detail that you want to include. So this is a we're looking what we're looking at here is a joint report. We also have an intermediate and simplified report. Intermediate report. Let's have a look at that. And we have a simplified report. Okay, very simple. And you have the option to um, generate a report just for your combinations and cases. So if we stick with the joint report, and now let's uh, look at how we would uh, adapt this report. So it's very simple. We can exclude anything we don't want to include in there. Let's exclude a couple of these just as an example. If we scroll further down, we can also preview it and output it as a Word document. So that allows you to customize your report. Applying these changes will then let us generate a report based on what we've chosen. Okay, so let's generate this report. Okay, so I've chosen to generate that in Word document. Now let's see what this report looks like. Okay, so there's the report and the views. We've also got our dimension uh, and the characteristics, all the low cases and the loads, all your uh, compression resistance to verifications. Okay, we have all the uh, combinations, the work ratios. The calculations are laid out line by line, as you can see, with reference to all the Euro codes. It's very easy to follow. Line by line, very detailed. This is a fairly detailed report. We've got uh, quite a few checks in this one. Okay, right, so there is an example of this report. 
And finally, we can also um, output this drawing as either in PDF or DWG. Let's head over to the interactive drawing. Okay, so there's our page. May need to resize this elevation slightly. And let's position it somewhere more appropriate. There we go. We can also change our title block and the layout for the page with different sizes. And we can add in additional views as well. Let's try and save this as an AutoCAD file now. So we'll save it as an AutoCAD file and then we'll open it in uh, AutoCAD. Okay. okay. So now let's have a look at this in AutoCAD. Here we go, there's our drawing in AutoCAD. Okay, so you can see all of the information has been carried across as per the uh, original drawing, interactive drawing. We can explode the elements and then that will allow us to customize this and take uh, and detail it even further uh, to amend the drawing to suit. We can also add in our company templates to suit as well. So there's the drawing in AutoCAD. So I'm going to close this and we also want to be able now to uh, design a, a connection idea static. If we have any connections which are, for example, any non-standard joints or any complicated joints uh, or even simple joints. So any type of joint really, we can um, export those connections to idea statica with our BIM link directly uh, through advanced design. So let's take a look at that then, shall we? So here is um, a model with a um, more complex connection. Okay. So this is the same connection on the end, but this time we've chosen to create a generic connection instead of a simple um, beam to column connection. So let's launch this within Idea Statica. I've selected the Idea Statica link. Very simple process. Let's let it open uh, model, uh, sorry, process this model. And then we will be able to see this exercise. So let's, uh, this is a European model. So I'm just going to convert this into UK sizes. Although the model was created using European section sizes in advanced design. So let's uh, create some uh, other section sizes so we can. Let's, let's stick with our European section sizes here. So it's the same process where these uh, choose UK European, but uh, it might work with Europeans. So UK sizes. Uh, let's turn that on and choose the UB section size of 178. Okay. So you get um, the opportunity to change, to change the section size at this step as well. So you can either choose to carry across the same section sizes from advanced design, or you can assign it new section sizes like I'm doing here. So I've got all my section sizes here. Let's uh, turn this one down a little bit to the lightest UB. And we go to the combinations now. So these are the load groups, the load cases, as per advanced design and our list of combinations. On the next page, we have some result classes. So these are the result classes which are going to be exported to Idea Statica. When this opens Idea Statica, you'll see that uh, exports 
all of the forces based on all of the combinations as well. So at the bottom, writing GTC file is successful. So it successfully exported this as a GTC file uh, to either Statica. I think the window may be on the other screen here. Let's drag that across. Okay, so here's our connection. And you can see that we have a column um, with a rafter beam and also beams at diagonals. Okay, and you can also see the loads there on the ends and at the base of the column. We have some moments and some uplift there as well. Okay, it's downward loads depending on all the combinations with all our load effects. There we go. So we've got all our relevant axial forces, shear forces, our moments as well. Okay, so we'd then be able to take this connection further and uh, introduce operations. So cut the members, introduce welds and plates. So I'm going to now model a, a connection for you from scratch. So I'm going to show you a connection from scratch by uh, using some of the commands in Idea Statica. So in order to start with a blank connection, you can obviously choose one from one of the templates. So let's start with a blank connection here. And I'm going to model a simple column with uh, two incoming beams with some uh, stiffness and wideness. Okay, so let me choose a bigger section. Okay, let's rotate this so it's perpendicular. And this will be our main member. So this is the bearing member which, uh, to which the beams will be connected. So it needs to be continuous. Time to add another member. Okay, we can slightly uh, knock this down a little. So we have a smaller section size. Okay, just a UB rather than, sorry, an H, uh, rather than HEA, we go for IP section. Well, UK equivalent is a, IP is equivalent to a UB uh, section size. Okay, so we need this one to be uh, at a pitch of zero. There we go. And it needs to be ended. So we don't want this to pass through. We're going to have another member on the other side. We can simply copy across. So the thing here with the side is you can uh, copy all the members and the um, operations. So you don't have to, so you're not double handling the work. So there we go. Simple case of changing the direction there. Let's introduce some operations to this now. So we need to add some end plates with connections on there. Let's choose an end plate. Um, so bolt assembly. So let's choose uh, grade 8.8 .8 bolts and we'll go for M16s. There we go, M16s. Or well, let's go for M12s. Uh, let's go with M12s actually, I think. So let's go with M12s, and you can see it's added a series of bolts there. Okay, so it's added five bolts on each side. Now let's manipulate this, uh, change this connection. Member two of the M will be the one on the other side, so we need to do the same on the other side. Let's turn that around so you can see. And it's, and it's connected to the main column, which is member one. The thickness, we might be able to increase that a little bit to 12 millimeters. This plate. There we go. Uh, we want it to be symmetrical to the profile, but we want to add in some um, wideners as well. So therefore, I'm going to increase the length uh, or height of this uh, plate so we can add those wideners on as well. So the bolt layout now, let's go into that. So now we've got five bolts. We'll uh, introduce some additional bolts on the top there. We don't need so many bolts here in the, uh, in the area of the web, which is incoming beam. 
Okay, so let's amend that. Um, that looks better. So four for the center, and then we'll have some at the top as well. Um, so that will then, it's been brought a bit too close to the web. So if you go for half that distance, so that looks about right. That looks more appropriate. Okay. And now we can add in our wideners. So let's add this widener in for both sides. Uh, let's add in a stiffener first. I think we can add in a stiffener and then we'll do the wideners. So let's add a stiffener to uh, the web of this column. There we go. It's added in our stiffeners there. Uh, between member one and member two, the thickness. I think 10 millimeters is okay. And it's located on both sides. So on this front side and on the other side as well. Um, next up, let's have a look at chamfering this show. Uh, let's chamfer this. We can also chamfer corners. There we go. And now we'll add in our wideners. There we go. So we added our wideners on this side here. Perhaps just make these 12 millimeters thick. Um, yep, for the webs. Let's uh, increase the depth of this. Go for 200. There we are. And now I can simply copy this to the other side. Okay, so I have wideners on the other side now when I choose the member. So member three, there we go. Okay, so we have some wideners on both sides now. Uh, and now we can add in some lobes. So let's add in a shear of, say, minus 50 and a moment of around 100, 100 kilonewton meters for the moment. Okay, so about a shear and a moment to this. I will now um, open up a model where I have, um, where I can analyze this already on a similar model. So we can do different types of analysis, a stress strain analysis, a stiffness analysis, a capacity design, a uh, joint design resistant, and also fatigue analysis. So fatigue analysis is new to this latest version of Idea Statica. So let's uh, I'll show you an example of this connection here, where I will run an analysis. It's very similar. So let's calculate this section. Okay, let's uh, see there's no loads, but we have got some loads. Uh, load case two, probably deactivate that one. But we can still run the calculation. It's doing several iterations here. And in this case, we're performing a stress strain analysis. Okay, so the results are presented by traffic light system. The red is what's failing, green is passing. So at the moment, we can see that the plates are failing by quite a bit. Uh, the welds are just failing, but the bolts are okay. And the analysis has completed 100%. So if we go over and look at the plates, here we can see that uh, these are the ones which are failing okay bolts okay so the bolts are passing so we're not expecting any failures there bolts are ideal actually 85 percent looks about right um if we go to welds now so let's see which are the ones which are causing the problem here Okay, so these are, so if I expand on it, I can see a detailed calculation on uh, uh, how they've arrived at these figures. Okay, so the way that 474 uh, megapascals comes from, there you go. Resistance is very low, okay. Um, plates are well over designed here, so I probably need to go back and increase the thickness of those plates. Make 
some changes. Um, here are some additional um, results. So the equivalent stresses, we can also look at the plastic strain. You can also turn on the mesh and uh, have a look at the deformed structure. Okay, so in this case, this is a uh, exaggerated uh, quite a bit. By using the deformed structure, you can see just how that structure and where the movement is in that structure. So where it's tending to pull away from the connection. So it gives you a very good idea. Okay, so I will just turn the deformed structure off in this case. Okay, zoom back in. We also have that stress in the contact. So stress uh, will be in the location of the bolt holes. There we are. So we can see some stresses there. Take a closer look at those. Right, so we obviously also need to be able to um, output this information in a report. So the report, once again, is very easy to generate, similar to advanced design. Uh, very simply uh, pick off the list what you want to include. So let's take a look at what this report preview looks like, and then I'll show you a detailed report, which I have generated earlier. Okay, so here is a more simpler report. So now let's take a look at a detailed report in Microsoft Word. Okay. So here, this report has um, several connections in there. Okay, so this is a, a simpler connection. So we've got detailed results for each of the bolts here. We can see bearing resistance checks as well, punching checks. Here we are We're looking at all the detailed results for the bolts now. We can see exactly what these uh, notations figures mean. Okay, bearing resistance check. There is now our manufacturing operations for the plates, the sizes of plates needed, and the bolt holes. So there's our connection that we just looked at. Okay, um, this particular one has been analyzed for a stiffness analysis. Okay, so here we are, details of our plates with bolt hole sizes, diameters. Connection similar to the first with all design data. So that uh, is what we have with Idea Statica. So, do we have any questions? If you have any questions related to what I've shown just now, or any other questions that you have related to uh, advanced design or Idea Statica, please uh, post these questions in the questions pane and I will pick these up. So, I'll now um, I'll give the opportunity to ask any questions and then I'll look at concluding today's webinar. So I'll give you a couple of minutes if you have any questions.
Okay, so it doesn't look like there's any questions at this point in time. But if you do have any questions, as always, please uh, send me an email to jamil.dida at greatact. Sorry, tongue twisted there to jamil.dida at greatact.com. And I'll pick up your questions by email. So, coming up, what do we have next planned? So today, we were going to show Revit to Femme, but uh, due to technical difficulties with the content, we've now uh, decided to show that tomorrow. So tomorrow, we'll be looking at uh, uh, Twilight Thursday. So going from Revit to Femme. So this will be the ultimate workflow for concrete building design. So here, we'll look at uh, um, exporting and importing models between Revit and Advanced Design, and also um, using Advanced Design to generate Femme analysis and then import those results back into Revit. On Twilight Friday, we will be uh, building upon that concrete theme and then designing a concrete structure with Revit and Advanced Design. So we'll start off with a concrete structure in Revit. We will then take that through to Advanced Design, where we will be using the concrete design modules to design um, some of the members and then also bring that reinforcement back into Revit. So that's what we have planned for later this week. So a lot of more um interesting stuff to come later on so please stay tuned so watch this space so thanks for watching today um thank you for joining me today as well on today's webinar as always please make sure to follow us on social media on our twitter facebook linkedin and youtube pages so we are we depend obviously on your support okay so once again thanks for joining me today um, but it's bye for now, and I will see you again tomorrow at the same time.